Are you insinuating that I, as the chairman of a successful company, am involved in football match fixing? That man, the witness, he's my father. Graham King, chairman of Pax Car Rentals. I don't know what he does, where he works, we're not close. The deceased blood results present a plate that counts substantially below normal range, leading to death by cerebral hemorrhage. Why would Tyler's blood have low platelets? Come back! You're me flashing your teeth all over the internet! None of this would have happened! Fucking mouth! Any questions about your son? This isn't a good time! Tyler's death's been upsetting enough. You coming around implying he was some kind of drug chief? It's Shannon Hinksman. We saw him hanging out with the firecrackers in Melbourne. Yeah, he's got form for assault, dealing, and standover. Mitch, I'll call you back, mate. So. That wasn't Clay's phone. We need to tell them. She fuck it. I'll tell them everything, you know. I'll bring you all down with me. Be careful, Clay. You do that, mate. We're gonna kill your son. That look he gave me. He was telling me it was murder. Having consulted the investigating officer and in light of new evidence, a charge of reckless driving against the driver of the bus which fatally struck Clay Nelson cannot be sustained. What, what have the police found? Unfortunately, I'm not at liberty to say. Doesn't the public what, have a right to know? There are bigger issues at play here which I'm unable to discuss. How do they feel about not seeing justice done? I can assure you we have informed them of our decision. They understand the situation. Oh, we'd be hating this. I'll say again, this decision takes into account the opinion of the investigating officers. What would you have done if you were Clay with the choice he had to make? Well, if I meant saving my children, there was no other way. The same, no question. You wouldn't slip me a coded message first? Clay did. He waited until he knew I'd seen him. And that look in his eyes. It was a man with no choice. Janet must have loved every moment of watching me eat her dog shit sandwich. I assess the new evidence is presented to me, I just can't share it with you. Because it came from the Star Chamber, which makes you her errand boy. You could have ignored my determination and run it as an ex officio indictment. You know I wouldn't have recommended withdrawing the charge without good reason. You tell Janet, I know exactly what this is about, and if this is the way she wants to play it, let the games begin. So the man who incited Clay Nelson's suicide, he talks about the boss, we heard his phone ring, whoever made that call could well be the major profit taker, so what do we get from the tower dump? Uh, uh, Janet, your office. Sure. What is that? The tower dump identified the phone belonged to Clay's mystery visitor and the man who called him. Great, who are they? Mystery man's phone is a burner. Registered to a false identity, uh, but the phone that called him belongs to your father, which now makes him our major person of interest. Last month, he made several calls to name Baldwin, Darren Fawkes, and Wazim Janapur. They are all connected in some way to the betting syndicate. Okay, and if we discover stronger evidence connecting him to that, we'll get him back in. Oh, you mean I will? Of course. I mean, I'll step back from any investigation concerning him. I reiterate, you cannot be involved in any proceedings in which your name and his appears in a transcript which might turn up in court or where you would be called as a witness. I can still focus on other persons of interest. I can still work know, this uh, reference behind an uh, ethical wall. I know how much you value your professional integrity and I trust you to stand by those principles, but under no circumstances are you to discuss anything about this reference with him. Of course. I'm... Even better, don't see him at all until this is over. Build that ethical wall very high and stay right behind it. Concentrate on how Shannon Hinksman fits into this.
You'd think for someone with drug and standover form. You get a bit more bang for your buck. Shop, strip club, home. Maybe Hinksman's finally gone straighty 180. He's been hanging out with the firecrackers. He's, he's a known bagman for... Hang on, hang on. You just met someone. Come on, sweetheart. Turn around. That a boy. That's Eddie Cook from Continuum Therapy. What's he doing with Hinksman? What are they meeting about? Love is tip by the looks. Eddie's left something. Shannon's got it. Right, stay on Shannon. Can you keep me posted? I'm going to Nate Baldwin's committal. Why bother? It'll just be Richard Sterling trashing the police case. Or proving his own. If he found the substance Tyler took to break causation for Nate, I need to know where it came from. It could lead us to whoever set up the betting plant on the devils. charge affect your sponsorship of the devils a room is curious every ties with them pairing with a club is like a marriage you're in it for the good times and the bad i have every faith that nate baldwin will be found not guilty and i look forward to him returning to what he does best superb football So, according to the two witness statements, one saw the accused hit the deceased with his right hand, the other with his left hand. Would you agree, Detective Sergeant Renner, that these are contradictory recollections? Well, in the heat of the moment, everyone sees things slightly differently. Slightly differently? Wouldn't you really say that these statements are two irreconcilable versions of the same incident? I object, Your Honour. Question calls for a conclusion, which is a matter for the court. Your Honour, Sergeant Renner is not a lay witness. His opinion is admissible. Your Honour, both statements describe a violent attack on Mr Pryde by the accused. That is an agreed fact. Just because my learned colleague found some minor inconsistencies, which Sergeant Renner has confirmed... Your Honour, I... Crown simply does not wish to hear that what they refer to as minor inconsistencies are, in fact, major contradictions. I wonder why. All we are saying is that if he wishes to make that argument, he needs to make it to the court. It's not a matter on which Sergeant Renner's opinion is relevant. Agreed. Thank you, Madam Crown. Well, the defence has highlighted conflicting evidence among the witness statements. But that is for a properly instructed jury to resolve. I find there is a reasonable prospect of conviction and commit Nathaniel Baldwin to trial for manslaughter. Date to be set at a mention on Friday. As the court pleases. All rise. Nate, do you still maintain your innocence? How do you feel about your husband, Jason Jett? What does this mean for your career prospects, Nate? Nate! Hey, well done. You did a good job. Thanks. It's a shame you can't run the trial. Like, if she's not, or you'd be losing again. I had this crazy idea. I sit at the bar exam when I was on maternity leave, but my adorable two-year-old superior had other ideas. Well, I know what I prefer right now. I take it you've got Nate in your sights for match fixing too. Bizarre has taken this to get us together again. Aren't Christmases and birthdays for that? 
In some families. I do send cards. Yes, your secretary is very efficient. Well, whatever the reason, it's great to be talking now. You still haven't arranged for me to meet the twins. I'd love to get to know them properly. I mean, what are they into? What do they like doing? Well, uh, they're very keen on athletics. You'd be happy to know that Emma's got the zone trials this Thursday, and Liam would have been there, but he hurt his ankle, so... Sports stars in the making, huh? <laughs> well, they didn't get that from you. Yeah, I'm free to meet them whenever it suits you. Are you sure you've got the time? I mean, must be dealing with a lot these days. Well, for my grandchildren. I'll make the time. Call me. You've got my number. The NCC must be looking at my phone records. I can't tell you that. Bloody told me you'd get the charges thrown out. Actually, my precise words were, I will do my best to have them thrown out. <laughs> and I could do much better if I had your full and frank cooperation. Whoa, 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 whoa. Recent Dale told you what they saw. I'm talking about whatever drug Tyler was taking. If we can show that changed his blood profile and he died because of that change, then we win. Our supplements are above board. You have all the paperwork from Eddie Cook. I mean, we never failed a drug test. Say we knew he had taken something. Hypothetically, what would that mean? Look, <laughs> there's no point talking what ifs. If Tyler took something outside of our program, we knew nothing about it. Okay. Or maybe his family does. He's obviously close with his sister. Have you spoken to her? After this, not a chance. What are you looking at? Um, youth services, so I could get a bed here. Good luck finding one. The lady said there would be. I've got all the forms I need. Like that makes a difference. Come on. I'll find you somewhere. Cindy. Carol. Guys, this is Pearl. It stinks. This can be yours. Just keep your stuff with you at all times. Even when you're check a piece. The drug results are in from Wayne busting that deal earlier, the one Shannon sold. The lab's confirmed that they're steroids, so not a match for whatever Tyler Parati took. But it does make you wonder about Eddie's supplements program for the Devils, and he's hardly all above board. He wants to play warm, doting grandpa. Graham was at Nate Baldwin's committal. We didn't discuss the reference. He 
He saw me and, and wanted to talk about the kids. 20 years of almost no contact, and he acts like he's been away for the weekend. Technically, he shouldn't have even spoken to him. I just had to see if the man standing in front of me was capable of ordering somebody's death. And? I thought I knew him. Yeah. Until he left. Maybe I didn't. And maybe I should take you home and pour you a glass of wine. Well, you obviously know me very well. Making progress. I hope. I wouldn't say I've got the full picture yet. Well, not that complicated. Not simple. I take that as a compliment. Offended if you didn't. Josie? The devil's Josie, it's gone. Yeah, it's a share house. Now we can all share it. <laughs> he sold it for drugs. So that was my brother's! You psycho bitch! What's going on? You asshole! Help! Help! Wait up! If you're here to talk about Nate Baldwin, you can forget it. I saw the press yesterday. <laughs> I'm sure you don't want to lose a second case involving a high-profile sportsman. Then we can't be talking about Nate. Convictions in no doubt. I read the committal transcripts. I was just warming up. The conflicting evidence will make it very hard to establish beyond reasonable doubt the actor's intention. Then why are you here? Because neither of us look good if this drags on. You want a guaranteed win? I'm happy to provide that. Let's just tidy this up and move on. Well, they want me to plead guilty. To a lesser charge. That's the offer put to me by the head of the DPP. Assault causing death that carries five years less in terms of sentencing maximum, and you'd avoid the stress of a trial. Well, there goes what's left of his career. Nate's already on a suspended sentence. If he pleads guilty... You'd automatically receive the two years the judge suspended last time. Yeah. No way. We should consider taking it. And then I'd argue for no additional time, given your obvious remorse and the emotional toll of the media attention. But he could get more. On top of what you get for assault causing death. The earlier the plea, the more favourable... I want the... no years. Not 12, not 10, not 2. I didn't kill the poor guy. He was a teammate. I would never do that. You were supposed to be keeping him out of jail, Richard. As your counsel, I will act as instructed. But my strong advice is to consider the plea bargain. It's the best option we've I'm got. I'm not getting locked up! Now, I'm instructing you to get me off. Packs are worse off than we realised. I already looked into their financial affairs. I looked further. They've lost 12 million in the last two years. But he's a successful businessman. Well, not anymore, apparently. Uh, assure me this information was gleaned via judicious forensic No, account. I did not ask Graham, and it's hardly something you'd be happy to admit to anyway. Thank you. Winning on fixed matches would help tidy up the bottom line. The finances, the phone calls to Wazim Jandapur and Nate Baldwin. Graham really looks like one of the big profit takers. No offence, I'm just drawing the dots on what we know. You're the analyst, you analyse. Leave drawing the conclusions to me, all right? So if he was hoping to make a lot of money fast, it would be a huge blow when the bet on the wide failed. You're thinking revenge arson on Wazim's place? Well, it could easily be an insurance job. So whose idea was the bet? Time to talk to Wazim. But you can only observe. Are you sure this is a good idea? We've got plenty of evidence linking Wazim Chandapur to all the... No, 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 I mean observing the hearing. Well, if I can't be present in the hearing, then observing is my only option. 
And what if Mr. Janderpur names your father as the big boss of the betting syndicate, as well he might? I'm ready for that. Are you sure? Because there's one thing to think something, another thing to actually hear it being said. I have to know. Either way, he's my father and I have to know. The day before the fire at your investment property, you placed a $15,000 bet on a wide being bowled in an A20 cricket match. That's a lot of money. You must have been sure of winning. How? I don't recall the occasion. Let me help you. The young man who bowled the wide has since suicided. That has got nothing to do with me. But it has got something to do with the people who gave you the tip. Who are they? No one gave me the tip. I just had a good feeling. A good feeling you shared. Your phone records indicate a considerable increase in international calls the week before the match. I was just ringing friends to say hello. That wide was part of a scam people all over the world bet on, and all of those people, including you, lost a lot of money. And the day after, your house was subject to an arson attack. Because Ravi Hassan was renting it. I told the police the attack was aimed at him. <laughs> Have you got any evidence to support that? Bigots in your community, they look at brown people and they immediately assume we're terrorists. Yeah, well, let's just sidestep the identity It's discrimination. Politics. Our treatment of you has nothing to do with discrimination, everything to do with your propensity to lie. <sighs> How dare you? You gamble a lot. It's left you in considerable debt. We know all that, Mr. Janderpur. Arranging a spot better, being a part of one, could fix that. Did Graham King give you the tip or did you give it to him? I met Graham through his charity Sports Foundation. I volunteered to help with it once or twice and so have my friends. But we never once spoke about betting. Come on. We'll be all right. We've got each other. Got nowhere to go. I'm starving. You should have said. I want real food. This is real food. Come on, let's crash. Figure something out tomorrow. Where? I'm not going back to that shit on no way. Well, where else is there? Home? As if. It's worse. Come on. I'll look out for you. It beats a park or a shop front. No, I'll figure something else out. Like what? I don't know. If you want to go, go. Back on your mate Hinksman? On my way to relieve the boys now. Anything interesting overnight? Well, apparently he slept like a princess. So I'm hoping he'll go to the pub for an early one. That way I can catch a Saints take on the Spurs. Ah, soccer. Uh, no, football. Football. We call it football. Yeah, I'm not worried about our back four. Last three games we've kept a clean sheet. No, oh, you've got to keep that sheet clean. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Just need to put in the hard graft up front. A few free kicks around their box, capitalise on our set pieces and we should do it. Then we'll be in with the shout at silverware. How are the other lot holding up? Well, the Spurs, nah, I reckon their arseholes are twitching like a hamster's nose. You've got no idea what I'm talking about, have you? Not a clue. Right. <clears throat> are you my 
might be aware that the Pax Sports Foundation holds regular workshops for underprivileged youth. The idea is to get them into, into sport instead of crime. Wazim Jandapur helped me organize a clinic for some of the Pakistani cricketers. He rang last night, said he had new evidence. It was a, a terrific day. You came here especially to tell us that you and Mr. Jandapur held a successful sports clinic? I thought you might suspect that our phone activity was something else, especially after the fire at his house a, a few weeks ago. So I just wanted to set the record straight. Why would you assume we were monitoring your phone? Uh, you've looked at my financial arrangements and my business affairs. Why not my phone records? That's very much the impression I was left with. The only person he get an impression from about our investigation is you. I told him nothing. He guessed we were looking at his phone. He asked me point blank if he were. I said I couldn't say anything. Oh, well, if he wasn't 100% sure before, he is now. Everything he said in there could have been a giant smoke That's screen. a possibility with any witness. It's compromised his evidence and therefore our progress on this reference. What, so a self-serving narcissist suddenly gets a bout of goodwill. I mean, that fact alone compromises his evidence. It's your job to see that. And it's your job to have nothing to do with him. Your ethical wall just came crashing what down. What was I meant to do? He's still my father, and we haven't had a proper conversation since I was 17, so... Nor can you have a proper conversation with him now until he's either cleared or convicted. He wants a relationship with the twins. Oh, well, at best his timing's problematic. And at worst? Strategic. <sighs> yeah, well, it was a lot easier when he wasn't around. Well... As the evidence is forming an increasingly compelling case against him, you're to stay in here, provide legal counsel, and no more. Hazelnut's on the move. You gave Shannon a code name? The side effect of steroids is it shrinks your balls. If he goes back to the gym next week, I'll be calling him Lemon Pip or then Sesame Seed. What's the update, Wayne? He flogged off all the roids at another gym, then drove off. Must be loaded with cash now. Let's see where he leads us. Need a title search. 87 to 89, New Lander Avenue, St. Peter's. It's going inside. But I can't take a closer look. They have too many security cameras. Who owns it? Oh, it's registered to a Miss Veronica Hinksman. Shannon's sister. Form? Clean as on paper. Oh, wait, he's coming back out. Carrying an envelope. He's on the move again. heading to the Rams Tavern, Livermore Street. Could be a drop. Head inside, but keep your distance. Not my first rodeo, champ. calling the man who visited Clay Nelson. What have we got actually connecting him to the betting syndicate? Um, can we have this conversation? 
Well, if I knew how implicated he really was, I could answer that question. Pack's finances doesn't directly link him. We've got phone contact with Nate down Forks, Wazim. That charity sports clinic for the dis... Uh, that charity sports clinic for the disadvantaged kids that happened. Wazim was there, like Graham said. It's just... Um... Go on. I know I'm not completely objective, but I would like to know your verdict. He's so connected to so many people in the betting syndicate. Not that that makes him a murderer. No, well, if he's a major profit taker, he's got blood on his hands by default. Mm. Who else was at that charity day? Other than Graham was in Pakistani cricketers and disadvantaged kids. Look into it. Okay. Nate's wife, Lucy, she's got a betting account. Maybe she could identify Graham as the boss. You know what's weird about her? She doesn't have a bank account. Not even a his and hers with hubby. No credit card either. So all her financial transactions are untraceable. It's a good way to bury any links to a betting syndicate. We need to see her. But if we're not meant to be having this chat and we're going to be asking about Graham, how... Just say it's your idea. Have you ever loaned your driver's licence or other ID to a friend to pay a bill or pick up something from the post office? No. Nate always handled our financials. So he opened the betting account. Just tell her we know sure. that. Birth certificate? Yes. Did you set up this Freedom Bet account? No. It's in your maiden name, Mrs. Baldwin, attached to your ID. Well, I never set it up. Someone must have got hold of my details. Or someone like your husband, who had his own account cancelled four days before yours was opened, and who transfers $5,000 into the betting account in your name every week? What? I never knew anything about this. Throw some names at her, see how she it's reacts. a lot of money. He must have been getting good tips from somewhere. Like Graham King. We know Nate calls him a lot. Well, yes, he's a sponsor. Nate does a lot of charity work for him. Yeah, that'd explain Nate's loyalty to the devils with his cheeky side, eh? His loyalty has nothing to do with betting. Nate wasn't even going to sign with them until Maxine negotiated a coaching position on retirement. Look, his reputation's on the rocks. He, he's got very little option, so he had to make sure that he was getting the best deal from the Devils. Graham King might have recommended him for coaching. I, I don't know. Ask when that was. Did you ever hear him discuss betting tips with anyone? Only the entire team. Those boys have bet on anything. Now, what about the sponsorship money from Continuum? Where did that go? Back to the contract. It's important. Any idea? That's important. Janet ever talked about her father with you? What happened between them? No idea. She's only ever mentioned him once or twice the whole time I've known her. I thought she would have told you of all people. Uh, some things are off limits, even to Uncle Tony. Keep waiting for the axe to fall in every hearing. Yes, it's Graham King. He's behind all this, the major profit taker. Well, I'm sure Janet feels exactly the same. How does she cope with that? When in danger of looking vulnerable, internalise. Wouldn't it be easier to share it with someone? Not until she knows the truth. And depending on what that is, maybe never. We all get nervous. Just use those nerves to get really determined. We'll be proud whatever happens. Well, Zoe knows what she's talking about, all right? It'll be your turn next, Liam. Uh, when the boot comes off, there'll be no stopping him. Isn't that right, Liam? Yeah. Oh, shit. I did not invite him. Regardless, he's here. Well, he was going on about meeting the twins, and I mentioned the Zone Carnival today. I can't tell him to go away. How am I going to explain that to the twins? Remember that man at the park that Uncle Tony sent away? He's your grandfather. Just be careful. Yes, of course. It's Tony, isn't it? And Sergeant Greer. Who's that? What supportive colleagues Janet well, has. The plan was that I would contact you about okay. meeting the twins. Uh, Emma, Liam, you wouldn't remember meeting my father. <clears throat> this is Graham. Your only baby is the last time I saw you, but I'm very pleased to meet you again, Emma 
and Leah. Hi. Hi. Hello. Uh, I've got something for both of you. Since you're so interested in athletics, you need the best shot at it. Hmm? Gift vouchers is very thoughtful. What do you say? Thank you. Uh, make sure your mum buys you some top-of-the-line runners. They're brand new, actually, so... Um... Uh, they need the best to be the All best. Right, they are the best. All right, that's you, sweetheart. You've been called. Come on. Um, can you stay? Show them how it's done, Em. Thanks, Uncle Good luck, Emma. Have you got children here, too? Only the twins. Come on, Liam. Let's go cheer your sister on. Uh, Janet's had quite the rise in the legal world. I'm guessing you're the mentor to thank. No thanks. All around work. I've looked out for her. Still do. Given her job and how you currently figure in that, it would help to keep your distance. If you think I'm exploiting my daughter and grandchildren because of that, you're so wrong. Go, Emma! Let's go, Emma! Come on, Emma! Come on, Emma! Come on! Yes! It's a foul. What? No, it wasn't. Yeah, 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 yeah. She sure, overstepped. The footprint. Well, they they didn't call it, so. You should tell them. It's cheating. Really good. Not deliberately. Play fair to win fair. That's what sports all about. Great effort, Emma. Well done. Do you think I should have said something to the tiny track official or whatever they're called at long jumps? You're not still worrying about that. I hate the way Graham does this. Gets to you? No, he spoils the win. He used to do it when I was a kid. Remember at school I was in the debating team and we'd made the final. I had to go to the staff room to ask about homework or something and I accidentally overheard them mention the debate question. Lucky you. It was an accident and only gave us a few hours advantage but Graham said I had to pull out, find a replacement. But, you know, it was the finals, that there wasn't anyone, and I couldn't let everyone down. And obviously you won. And he... Well, he never said anything. But the way he withdrew, I knew. That's how I always knew he stopped being there for me until the day he actually wasn't. That must have been a huge disappointment to him by then. It hardly seems like such a big deal, especially seeing it wasn't a deliberate cheat. It was the principle. My father has always been totally uncompromising. So he's not perfect. You still turned out all right. Hey. Hey. How's the manslaughter trial going? Oh, I'd be going a whole lot better if I could find a teenage girl who knows what I hope she knows. Nobody's that hard to find these days. This one is. She's a teenager. They're always on the phone. Who's asking? Richard Sterling. Can I firstly say how terribly sorry I am for your loss? I've seen you before. Oh. Nate Baldwin's barrister. I shit on talking to you.
No time to wash these days. <laughs> that was Pearl Parati. You've met her, haven't you? It's only in passing. Why? I know you're looking into Tyler's death and whether there were drugs involved. The club said you'd asked about it. I can't discuss this reference with you, Richard. It could break causation for Nate, so if you know anything, I need to hear it. I thought Pearl could help, but all I got was... Unless you want to try with her? She may well react like that to me. I'm rather fond of this outfit. <laughs> you do have the distinct advantage of not being Nate Baldwin's defence barrister. So, are we running the same race? I need a copy of Nate's contract with the Devils. Why? The secret NCC business. Well, I don't suppose there's any point in me arguing client confidentiality? Not when I can get a subpoena. Come on, let's not faff around, all right? I help you if you... I'll have it sent over. Is this the address Richard gave you? Yeah, must be a friend of the family's. Hi, I'm Janet King. I met you the other day at your mother's. This is Bianca Grieve. We're with the National Crime Commission. I'm a sergeant with the federal police. You're not in trouble. Who is it, babe? Uh, uh, hello. It's Flynn, isn't it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. You were down at the, uh, the clinic the other day. <clears throat> yeah, that's right. Is there something else I can help you with? Or? Actually, we're here to talk to Pearl. Ah. Yeah. You good? Yeah. Yeah. Come on. Was it possible your brother took something to boost his performance? No. No way. Tao is beyond committed. So you never saw him with any pills, liquids, anything like that? He wouldn't have done anything to stop him making first grade. Did your brother... Hang out with Finn much outside of work? Maybe. I don't know. What about you? Are you staying here now? Uh, yeah, just so I can get my own place. Got to wait till I'm 16. Does your mum know you're here? No. She's too drunk to care. You all right? Because, you know, we can help you. I'm oh, fine. Me. Okay. Got food. Wi-Fi. It's none of your fucking business. She's 15. I know, he's a creep. It's horrendous. But legally, what do we actually see? An illegal relationship between a sicko and a child. Flynn pulling on his pants isn't evidence, nor is him touching her arm. I mean, he's given her a place to stay. As long as she has sex with him. But we can't prove that to a court. All we can do is find another reason to see her again, try and get her to make a statement. Bonnie, right. we need a full background on Flynn Pierce. He's the assistant at Continuum Therapy. Right, I've got this on Shannon Hinksman. Ram's Tavern. Drinks exactly four rum and cokes, speaks to exactly no one, goes outside, and guess what? The car, it's gone. Stolen? No, and it didn't seem surprised. It just hopped into a taxi and went home. And the car he left behind is registered to Pax Car Rentals, Graham King's company. That can't be a coincidence. So I got the GPS on the Pax car, went to Nate Baldwin's house. Did Lucy or Nate get in? I think that's doubtful because the car went straight to the Pax depot. What about their records? Whose name was it hired in? It was fake. And guess what? The same fake name that's on one of the betting accounts. Could be a drop of Eddie's new supplement, which is stored at that warehouse in St Peter's to the devil's care of Shannon Hinksman. They use a pax car so that no one can be connected to the delivery. So why did Hinksman get out halfway there? Well, maybe he supervises the pickup, but not the drop-off. Can't be trusted with the new juice. So who drove the rest of the way? And who organised the whole delivery? We need to get inside that warehouse. Well, surely there'll be cameras inside. We can disable remotely. Loop the footage so they see the previous five minutes until you're out. Where do you feds get this stuff from? Starts with the FBI, then ASIO, then us. Right then.
pay back. Cash, burner phones, but no drugs. OK, so someone took the cash from the warehouse to Nate Baldwin's. Who has a betting account with the syndicate in his wife's name. I just found something else linking Graham to those accounts. Uh, Janet. No, uh, I need to hear this. I looked into who else was at the PAC Sports Foundation charity day with the kids, like you said. All the real people claimed ignorance, so I analysed their jobs and addresses to see if there are any patterns. Eh, fail. But one variable I didn't use was volunteer positions. They were all at the charity sports day helping out. Those volunteers were also the first four accounts opened in the betting syndicate. So Graham asked them to set up accounts or flogged their details. Either way, makes them look like the originator. Also, we just picked this up from Nate Baldwin's phone. I didn't know what was up. I had to call Graham. That uh, won't happen again. You sure we're right for next time? With everything going on? Yeah, don't worry, nothing's changed. Play it again. I didn't know what was up. I had to call Graham. That uh, won't happen again. You sure we're right for next time? With everything going on? Yeah, don't worry, nothing's changed. That's the voice of the man who visited Clay Nelson. And Nate can tell us who he is. No, let's go straight to the top. If Nate's calling Graham when he's worried, either Graham's Mr. Big or he can tell us who he is. hearing's about to start. I know. Whatever happens, well, you know I'm here for you. For all his faults, Graham's not a match fixer or a cheat. At least not after the whistle blows. I think there's another explanation for what he's done. Lucy said Nate almost didn't sign with the Devils. Until Maxine negotiated a coaching position on retirement. His reputation's on the rocks. He's got very little options, so he has to make sure that he got the best deal out of the Devils. So the Devils had to find a way to keep him, and yes, as a major sponsor, Graham had a stake in that. spike in these phone calls from Graham's phone to Darren and Nate. It's in the same week Nate was negotiating his contract. Darren Fox, a known supporter of the Devils Football Club. Uh, Richard, this is Darren. Uh, Richard's a lawyer. Darren's in concrete. Concrete? Yeah, specialise in boots. <laughs> Kidding, mate. I'm in construction. <laughs> Not short of cash and loves pocketing favours. Keep two pieces off. I think Graham asked him to help get Nate over the line, and I'm not talking about scoring a coaching gig. You mean to say you deliberately arranged extra payments outside the salary cap? No, that's all. No bets, no fixes. We just wanted Nate. He was paid in installments. Uh, Darren didn't want to invest 100% up front in case Nate did something stupid, like get a sack or... Who was the bag man? Who made sure Nate got the payment? We know that this is Shannon Hinksman. He picks up the cash from the warehouse in his sister's name. But rather than risking a high-profile footballer being photographed with a criminal, he leaves it in the hire car. And someone else picks it up to do the handover. And the cash lands at Nate Baldwin's house. So, who's the man who visited Clay, who we heard with Nate? No idea. <laughs> he certainly knows you. I didn't know what was up. I had to call Graham. That uh, won't happen again. I didn't know what was up. I had to call Graham. That uh, won't happen again. Who was that man? I don't know. Darren handled the logistics, but he wanted everything kept at arm's length, so I was Nate's contact. Uh, he, he rang up complaining once that the drop hadn't arrived. So I rang Darren. Darren gave me a number. 
Said, sort it out with him. Well, whose number was that? They didn't give me a name, and the guy never answered. I will admit, I bent the rules to keep a star player in the right club, but that's just leveling the playing field. Everyone does it. What about performance-enhancing drugs? Is that leveling the playing field, too? How the devils play, train, what they eat, that's their job, but I would never interfere in the course of a game. I don't gamble or fix matches. And he's always stuck by that code. As far back as me debating at school. When it comes to what he believes in, his own set of principles, my father, he's utterly intractable. Unlike his daughter. I'll ask you one last time, Mr. King. Are you absolutely sure you can give us no information about the man you called? Look, I know you've got my phone records. So why don't you check? I phoned once. We never spoke. I don't know who he is. I ordered the CCTV from all the petrol stations in a 10 kilometer radius from Wazim's house, looking for anyone buying matches, a candle, a gas bottle. It's labor intensive and boring, but... This is right before the time of the fire from a petrol station two minutes away. That's who set fire to Wazim's house? Has to be. Who are you? I hope this is the end of the NCC examinations. I mean, breaching salary caps is hardly your frame of reference. You should have been honest about it the first time you came in. They asked me about match fixing, but it was irrelevant. Well, you break the rules, you can't be surprised by the consequences. This doesn't have to go beyond the NCC, does it? I mean, if Nate goes to jail, it's a non-issue. If not, well, I haven't broken any laws. We have to report this to the Australian Power League or we could appear compromised. Ah, well, if there's one thing I've done right, is teach my daughter the meaning of integrity. Tell them about Nate, just the salary cap. Yeah, I'm well aware of that. I had no choice. I just thought you should know. Well, of course I should. <sighs> Thanks for the update. Shit. about the new crown you'll be opposing? I heard there's been, there's been a change. Yes. Who? Well, at the moment, the only way I'm going to stay outside is if I get hold of that drug. What if I got it? So cut the crap and give me what you're giving them. One bottle, 20 grand cash. You're fucking dead, Mr. Pierce. No, fuck off! It wasn't like that! You can't say that shit to me! I am the one who dictates the direction of it, not you. You've just put all of that in jeopardy. Help somebody! Help us! 